Good afternoon and welcome to Audio Tree Live. Today is Wednesday, February 17th, 2016, and we're excited to have with us Keenan O'Meara. <laughs> Audio Tree Live. We're in the studio with Keenan O'Meara. What's up, man? Thank you very much for coming out and performing for us. My um, treat. I want to try and get to all six, so why don't you just roll into your next one? Sure. Uh, this one's called Might As Well Swim.
see getting deeper as your tears falling. Watching Audio Tree Live. We're in the studio with Keenan O'Meara. Yeah, man, take those off and go ahead and switch up however you're going to do it. Uh, so you came here alone. Do you usually travel alone? I mean, without a tour manager, without um, a buddy or anything? Last time I was really lucky. Um, for, for person I knew was a colleague first, uh, who's an incredible singer and writer um, named M. Louie. Mm-hmm who has since become my girlfriend. Okay, cool. Um, was really sweet to help me drive the last time. Um, I just finished a tour with um, Leanne Havas. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Not exactly just finished a tour. Um, but a couple months back, right? It was October, pretty much all of October. Okay, yeah. Um, and uh, it was really fun, but it was one of those situations where we had to... Um, Drive in a in a like a wagon basically behind yeah, yeah. a big tour bus, which is easy on the coast. But uh, anyone who's toured before knows that like when you're doing the like the plane hustle, that gets really tough really oh, quick. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Or even like you know moving that around in cities or anything like that, right? Like trying to I don't know trying to park something like that is, yeah, is well, difficult. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but like be weird. Basically, just I mean driving by ourselves in this little car, which is really fun and um can be as liberating as it is sometimes uh trying but uh, sure sure yes yeah, so this time i'm doing it by myself this time so it's gonna be a lot of driving but um but i i kind of love it so it's not a huge deal yeah what are what are the benefits of traveling alone your own time i suppose yeah your right? own time it's cheaper yeah uh, <laughs> right and uh you don't have to like if if it if it's like bad, especially when it's your own project, if it's a bad night, I don't, I don't care. But if you have people with you and they're kind of suffering with you, that's kind of like can stress me out. So. Sure. So it's sure. actually really nice. But like, yeah, I'll just sleep in my car tonight, and it's not a big deal. And, yeah. But if yeah. it's like another person, it's kind of want to put other people through that. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's also really reflective to just be in the car for hours by yourself and. Especially for these like Southwest drives, I'm getting really sure. excited to cross the Rockies and stuff. So. Are you able to, I mean, you're obviously not able to write as you're driving, but listening to some demos or yeah, know, work yeah, on music while you're driving? Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's actually really, it's actually surprisingly productive kind of uh, time. I can go back and listen to like memos and stuff and you do a lot of kind of, you know, you make a lot of mental notes the next time you get back to your, your rig or your guitar or your notebook or whatever it is. It's actually sure. really helpful, so. Do you do book on tape or podcast or I anything do. like that? I do. I do all that stuff. What What have you been listening to lately? Uh, so I'm up to date on all the like serial stuff. I'll sure. do American Life and um, Radio Lab and all that stuff. Hardcore history. I'm waiting for Dan Carlin. If you're listening, I'm waiting for the next King of Kings. 
Love that stuff. Um, I'm trying to get into books on tape, uh, but I try and do everything like free. So, so that's a little bit harder. So it's yeah. a little bit harder. I'm like, I don't know if I want to commit and then get into a book. I'm like, I don't. I don't yeah, do I'm not anymore. into this. It's Plus also the, weird because you have to, uh, you know, the voice actors, yeah. if you will, or the readers are always so different. There's there's two points at which I could fail. Yeah, or it could be a great book, and you could just have a dopey reader, <laughs> and it doesn't really work. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, that definitely helps pass the time. And For sure. Sometimes I'll just listen to TV shows too. Oh, okay, nice. cool. Yeah, yeah. you can get what's going on. Did all the Better Call Saul stuff like that. Yeah, especially <laughs> wordier shows like that. Like, yeah, the like Arrested good. Development or something like that. You can, you can like figure that. out what's going on. You miss a lot. But. Yeah, but then, then you can watch it and you can watch it twice without uh, yep. losing anything. All right, man. Uh, thanks again for coming out. You can roll into your next one when you're ready. Cool. Um, this, song, this song's called Blinks of Light. Um, this will be one of two songs I'm playing tonight that's uh, not on my EP, so uh, hopefully we'll be releasing this record um, before the summer. So here we go. So At the water's edge I contemplate everything As I wait along Floating on the water's edge Watching Audio Tree Live. We're in the studio with Keenan Omira. You're on that same guitar for this next one, right? Okay, why don't you just take it away then, man? Good on time. Cool. Yeah, oh yeah. Do it. No. 
Watching Audio Tree Live, we're in the studio with Keenan O'Meara. So the cover of the EP, Awful Creature, has a dog on it. And I read a story that you told about that. Um, that dog's from Mongolia, some trip you took to Mongolia. I'm just curious about the intent of that trip. Did you go alone in the first place? Um, so yeah, I was on a, I actually was traveling with my mother for that trip. Um, but we were on a bus up to... Um, a town near a lake called Lake Hufskol. Um That's kind of near Siberia. But you stop at all these, um, you stop at all these these tiny little gas stations. It's not, you know, uh, terribly unsimilar to maybe some of the more like mountainous, sure, um, sparse drives you'd take in like the Northwest or in yeah. the Rockies here, or like Montana. Yeah, exactly. Area. You know, there's a, there would be a gas station maybe every hundred miles. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the, I guess there's these 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 there were these dogs that were just living off tourists coming to the gas station. and um, But there was, they were like, it was, it was strange. I was just kind of, I had just started shooting on 35 millimeter because I was really excited about that. And um, so I was, you know, kind of like picking my shots a little more uh, precisely. And, sure, and this sure. dog just kind of got up in front of me and made two like ridiculous poses in front of this <laughs> beautiful background. But, um, but yeah, I don't know, the, the, the record... It was called Awful Creature, and a lot of it was kind of just, like, a lot of introspection and taking parts on my own personality and writing songs about them as if they were, like, characters. It was kind of a purge for me in a lot of ways. Uh, And I thought that, like, the idea of this, like, roaming dog looking for affection kind of was... Representative. Yeah, it was kind of nice. But, you know, it's fine. Every time I hand the record to somebody, like, oh, is it your dog? Yeah. (laughs) It's so cute. You're like, no, maybe that's a better story, but here's this "Ah, one, too. I tried. (laughs) Uh, so you were taking that trip uh, for what reason, though? Just, just to, just to see. Just it. to I've go. Always wanted to g- I've always wanted to go. It's cool. A, it's an t- incredible place. It's a home to an ancient empire that ruled most of the known world at one point. Yeah. Uh, there's still a really robust um, echo of that culture there. It's un- it's pretty unbelievable. How uh, uh, how long were you there? Like Twenty days, I think. Whoa. Yeah. Dang. We'd bounce in and out of Ulaanbaatar, um, and then you know we would went to the Gobi Desert for a few days, and then we went to like who schooled with a few days and then we went to um some of the more like montaneous regions there yeah and, um it was pretty like it was a pretty straightforward I, I mean it was like a tourist 
Okay. Situation. I wasn't yeah, like, yeah. you know, like growing a beard and yeah, and, 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 and <laughs> starting fire or anything like that. But um, <laughs> yeah. But it was just it was such a spectacular and beautiful place. I can't recommend it more if somebody has saved up for a trip. Yeah. Um, if you can get to Beijing, it's two hours from there, and um, once you're in there, the, I mean, the dollar goes really far. So yeah, um, you can do a lot. For a was that something your mother wanted to or yeah, did you yeah. guys intend on taking that trip together no she actually wanted to go first and um us her her, her friend backed out so uh she asked if i wanted to go and i said yep that's awesome <laughs> so i got really lucky have you taken any other like mother son trips of that magnitude i mean that's no, I awesome think, no no that was her first time and that you know like anyone can Imagine that it had it's it's amazing, and then there's you know the, and then there's like the all the stuff parental, that comes with yeah, it, yeah, the bickering. And the, <laughs> but uh, so yeah, it's such amazing, and it was a good bonding experience. And yeah, I was gonna say that probably changes your relationship pretty drastically, yeah. right? Like, yeah, it, it was fun. pretty positively. It was yeah, it was such a good time, and um, she's an incredible travel partner. I'm nice. really lucky to have a mother who wants to do stuff like that, and then more. Uh, more or less wants to treat me to stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, crazy, so. yeah, right on. Still doing 35 millimeter? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Cool. What what else do you like to shoot? Or, or like, what are your, um, I don't know, what are you looking for in um, photography? I'm still not sure. I'm, I'm kind of, it's just a hobby. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I hike a lot. And I'm kind of like out in different places as much as I can. My girlfriend and I live up in High Falls, New York. And it's pretty close to the Catskills. So whenever we can, we f- find time we go up uh, into the Catskills. So I'm always shooting... Whatever, but I've, I've 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 actually made it sort of a New Year's resolution. I want to get into portrait photography and okay, and think about like shooting some of my friends and and how maybe learning the basics of that because I think that's sure. really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a magical thing if you can make somebody if you bring somebody's essence out of a photo. I think that's a really absolutely powerful thing. Yeah. Absolutely, you're right. All right, man. Uh, you can roll into your next one cool. when you're ready. The song's called uh, "Misery Is You."
Thank you. You're watching Audio Tree Live. We're in the studio with Keenan O'Meara. Before you take it away into your last one, I'm curious what your experience in New York has been like. You grew up in Maryland, right? And then yeah, you moved, went Boston, and then to New York. Is yeah. that the correct trajectory? Yep. Right on. So did you live in the city proper at any point no, in I, New York City? Nah, I was kind of like a cliche, like, Brooklyn guy. Okay, yeah. <laughs> For, like, six years. <laughs> I like that you say cliche. Yeah, Brooklyn I mean, it's just, guy. like, such a groaner after a while. It's like, okay. Yeah, but um, it's a. I mean, it's still it's such a magical place, and it's where I found um, a musical community. That sure, I uh, can say with a hundred percent certainty, I just wouldn't be doing this without. So right, right. Did you play in some bands yeah. uh, before you were doing this project? Yeah, I, I play um, uh, in a band, kind of like indefinitely called Annie and the Beekeepers. That's sort of on hiatus. Annie just had a baby boy, and um. I think just turn two, but uh, we're gonna start. We're just gonna start playing again in April, which I'm really excited about. Cool. I play guitar in that band, and then I had a band for a while called the Spindle Room Band in Brooklyn that uh, was a little bit more like a rootsy folk thing. And then um, um, I've just since just did, I've, I think I, I started working on the record that's out now, maybe like three years ago. Okay, and uh, recorded it like two years ago, and kind of just got it out. And um, I have five more tracks from that we'll be putting out but um but yeah new york oh, it was extremely fearful uh i was excited to get there and I'm, i was very psyched to get out but every time i go back i always enjoy it miss little parts of it I, yeah I, yeah I, I probably will end up back there one day okay one or another, so. just just the exhaustion or the the speed of life there is what yeah. you're not going to miss yeah just you know you're just always kind of gassing for air sure uh but this community that you speak of, like, expand on that a little bit. These uh, are just a bunch just, of like-minded people. Yeah, just uh, people all working really hard, absurdly talented and absurdly sweet. Um, just a group of, of bands in Brooklyn that have all some sort of, like, uh, are finding little sort of trajectories in their own. And it's really exciting to see everyone. Like, you know, there was a time, when we like, th three, four years ago. When I was kind of just meeting all those people, and it was all just kind of like, oh, this yeah. is going to work. Yeah, we yeah. were playing like open mics and stuff sometimes, or you know, like loose, um, kind of like promoted shows, and you know, it was it was interesting. Everyone was it was just like this like this this moment where everything was like the seeds were all just being planted. Okay, was, sure. There was this excitement to it that's kind of hard to describe. Yeah, um, and hard to recreate. I would hard imagine, to recreate. Right? Yeah, I feel really lucky to just like be there and watch all these people grow, and and uh, it's equally exciting to just kind of like. You know, sit in bed with my phone and like, whoa, like they just played that. Around. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, what's going on? Yeah, so, watching them grow or yeah, watching it's just, their it's careers blow up. Yeah, it's amazing. So I was really lucky to find those people and even luckier to have those people, uh, you know, to, to take me and come to my shows and play. They, some of them came, play, a lot of people are on my record. Um, so if you're listening to their record, there's a lot of those people in there. Cool, cool. Playing strings or uh, singing background vocals or whatever. Yeah, just any sort of auxiliary yeah, instrumentation. Yeah. And do you feel like at this point in your life you could call on any number of them to continue helping you with your projects going forward? Uh, I think so. I've, I mean, they've helped me so much. I mean, even with just getting this record out, it was this enormous push, you know, years of just demoing. And there are a few characters that I'll just never be able to pay back. Um, and releasing the record was as exciting as it was kind of like, oh, my God. You, know, you yeah. work that hard on something. You, <laughs> and you're almost you're like, like, sick of it. We're going to the <laughs> And then it comes, you know, you put it out. And you're like, well, maybe we'll just print 500 <laughs> and see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it up on SoundCloud or something. <laughs> I'll just uh, release it for free yeah. and uh, see where that yeah, takes I mean, me. Just, the reality of the business doesn't make it hurt any less, but it's just how it is. But, uh, yeah. But yeah, they've helped, they've helped me a lot. I, I, I pump the brakes. I try and throttle it when I need something or wish, you know, I'm, I, I don't want to ask too much more. Sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but hands down, I would not be here, wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't have been. I mean, Leanne Havis is one of those people who has just been so helpful. I wouldn't have been there um, or doing any of that stuff without those people. So, um, so yeah. Sweet, man. Good to hear. Uh, just lastly, your choice to go up an hour north or whatever, what, uh, what brought you there? Uh, Why did you decide to move there? It's still an experiment, but... Um, I didn't want to do like the cliche like we're going to the mountains and making a record, but yeah. uh, but it was just so cheap and uh, it's close to the metro north. So for us, it made a lot of sense um, to go up there and you know we both work on a little composition work. You so and your can, girlfriend, yeah. So we can work home, from home, which is nice, and then I can work on. I, I want to get another record done before the fall. That's my goal is to get cool. this, get this next EP out. 
and um, I'm doing a covers record, which I'm really excited about, and then uh, get a new record finished before the fall. So part of being up there is just to be out of it, um, not have to work as much, and yeah. Have and money time. is a is a real factor to be considered. I mean, too, it's just right? a, it's, it's just so much pro- cheaper. It's just proportional to time, yeah. especially in New York, where you know it's just like, all right, I uh, do I want two days a week to do this, or do I want four, you know, or three or whatever? But uh, um, so it's yeah, it's been a world of difference, and it's been really nice, and the quality of life is amazing, and I just feel. I feel like younger. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's that it sounds cheesy, but uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you just you don't you don't realize. I think a lot of people who are in New York a lot. It's this magical place, but you're just always on the, always on the on the uh, the burner, so to speak. And when you get off, you're kind of like you don't realize how much you can heal. Yeah, and it's it's really amazing. That so. like almost literal weight that <laughs> <laughs> that is removed. I know. I yeah. I feel that even it's like just leaving weight. this city for a little bit. You yeah. know, sometimes you go to a to a small town and you're like, yeah. oh man, everything here is so slow. Like, yeah. All these people are so quiet. You're just, your processes per minute are just going down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, if you just look at it that way. So. Yeah, man. Okay, cool. Uh, why don't you roll into your last one? Okay. Uh, this song's called uh, Mania. <clears throat> Someone 
You're watching Audio Tree Live. We've been in the studio with Keenan O'Meara. Get the new record, Awful Creature, out now, and you can check them out on tour all the way through March, mid-March, doing a Day Trotter Downs Festival this weekend, then on Sunday in St. Louis, a West for a while, and coming back to Chicago at Shuba's on March 4th. So yeah. check it out. Thank you very much, man, for performing yeah, for us. Thank you for having me. It's my treat. Thanks to awesome people in the studio and sound engineers, camera and lighting crew for hooking it up, and viewers, thanks for watching. You can support Keenan by downloading the session when it comes out in a week or so and send a shout via social media to us or him if you just want to connect. From all of us here at the Audio Tree Studios, thanks for tuning in. Goodbye.